Dada sends them packing in the last race. Not a bad beginning this one. Caught them in a good line. Footworks in the green and black silks right there. Lillian Spice looking to overcome a draw early. Right there is Film Star, the white cap. Crystal River, red and white silks between them. Evening Elegance is not far off the tempo. Sabele Forest a little bit strong between runners. Few runners just looking to settle into their stride early on. Lillian Spice has caught deeper out on the turf. Races three lengths off the leaders as they jostle for early position into the turn. Then we drop back to Mermaid Siren who keeps company towards the inside. Races with Roy's Butterfly. They seven lengths off them. Roy's Jewel on the outside. Intersection. Pippin the yellow cap gives them nine lengths start. Pippin's got the blue body with the yellow cap. Just in picture has a shadow roll. Then there's the white blinkers between runners. That is Logan's Legacy with 10 lengths to make up. Film star past the 700 meter zone from footwork in second. Evening elegance. Then comes Crystal River. Lillian Spice has been three around throughout. Towards the inside, Mermaid Siren. Settle for the run home. Film star has the lead by two. Lillian Spice comes to the outside to apply pressure. Evening elegance towards the inside. Mermaid Siren. Lillian Spice moves up rather dangerously at the 300 meter marker. Pippin now starts to unwind the yellow cap on the outside. Lillian Spice goes for home by two. Pippin tries to close in the yellow cap on the outside. Evening Elegance. Lillian Spice now by two and a half lengths and Lillian Spice is going great guns from Pippin. Lillian Spice it's all over. All things nice out here. Lillian Spice by three. Pippin second. Then came Crystal River and a running on a vast. Well, number 13, Lillian Spice. We had a chat to Paul Affery during the week for understarters orders, and this looked to be a five-star bet. Opened up 9-2, to two, the daughter of Golden Sword. Of course, the Inga form line and the Dale House form line to the fore. She raced wide throughout, but never mind. Diego de Gavea, he allowed her to build coming to the 300, and she swept away from the opposition. Pippin will stay on for that second spot. Crystal River, and look at a nice run from Avast. Gets a mention very late on in the afternoon. Then came number four, Roy's Butterfly. Sabele Forest is downfield. Lillian Spice, this is for Mr. Cox, bred by the Summerhill Stud, the daughter of Golden Sword, out of the Captain Elmer, Lady Mia. She sprung away from the opposition coming to the 300, just started to drift towards the inside away from the stick. But there Diego de Gavea now changes the whip from left to right. Pippin the yellow cap comes from well off the gallop, but it's all over by the shouting. Lillian Spice, a sweet victory for the daughter of Golden Sword. Well done to the Paul Lafferty stable, all on song at this point in time. Winner after winner, that's a wrap from Scottsville. Sheldon Peters signing off. Back to the studio. We've just seen the running of the 10th and final race. That's gone the way of uh, number 13, Lillian Spass, which was ridden to victory by Diego de Gavea uh, for the Paul Lafferty uh, stable. Decent uh, day for them, really turning out the winners in a, a, a very, very eye-catching uh, effort. Yeah. I've got uh, Phil, who's going to do the whole representation. Phil, uh, good day for Paul. He's turning out the winners and an impressive winner. Yes, I think the guys are putting in the hours at work, and they're working really hard, and they're reaping the benefits. Yeah, because uh, I think he's had a, a number of winners this month. Yeah, he's done really well. The season started off nicely. He's been given some good support from uh, guys from Australia, Vin Cox, the owner of this filly. And uh, she took on the boys last time. And I must say that uh, I was a bit panicky because uh, Diego was caught three wide with no cover. But I must say she quickened up nicely and I think she'll win maybe a few more. Yeah, definitely. With that uh, win under the belt, we'll see how she fares out the maidens. Yeah, very much so. Great. Thanks, Phil. Thanks for uh, the words. We'll catch you soon. Thank you. Lovely. Let's get uh, Diego in here. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, a decent uh, day. You and uh, Mr. Lafferty have teamed up nicely. Uh, yes, I mean, it's going along nicely. Just a big thanks to him. You know, he's been giving me all the opportunities, and without them, you can't ride the winners. Take us through this one. Uh, yeah, I was a little bit panicky when I was three wide, um, but I know she's a very smart horse, so I didn't um, worry about being three deep. But uh, when I asked the question, she quickened up well, and yeah, great win. Probably get a touch further? Much further. Um, last time she ran against the boys, she got beat half length. I made her a good thing today. And I'm just glad she's come through and proved us all right. Lovely stuff. Good day. 
Yes, definitely a very nice day. Um, just before I go, I'd like to say a big thank you to Mr Lafferty once again, um, as well as to Mr Burns, his family that's here, as well as to the two head boys, uh, Vusiwa and Sugar, and to the Riding Masters and the Academy. Thank you very much. Good effort. One more thing, sorry. Um, the, just to the owner, Mr Cox, you know, very uh, big thanks to him. Great stuff. Thank you. There we've uh, heard it from all concerned here from the 13, uh, number Lily and Spass uh, from the Paul Lafferty yard. Well done to uh, Mr. Cox, uh, who uh, owned that one, uh, to Diego, who had a, a decent day here at Scottsville. That was 10 races, uh, concludes our meeting uh, here at Scottsville. We'll see you next week.